So are you ready to play in the cloud? Well, you can. Are you ready to do it securely? Well, I'm here to help you out with that. We're going to talk about Cloud Security Alliance's certification for cloud. It's called the Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge. Now, it is a certificate as opposed to a certification, and some would say, well, what's the difference? And I'll explain that later on. But I think it's a great certification for you to prove your knowledge of certification for cloud security. Okay, so why should you listen to me? Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller. I've done a few things in security. I do have three cloud certifications. As you can tell by my shirt, I have the CCSK, I've got CompTIA certification, and the EXIN certification for cloud. I also have 17 other security and technology certifications, and I've passed 75 professional IT exams. Now, I have a consulting practice that includes cloud security, and I've successfully migrated a large organization uh, from co-location to cloud, uh, actually while they were compromised. Uh, I've written for Pentest Magazine, and I teach for a living as well as consult. So that's why you should listen to me. And maybe you'll have a little bit of fun. Okay, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. You want the Cloud Security Alliance Certification of Completion for the Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge. Let's talk about the certificate, the prerequisites, the certification, all the intimate details of it, how you take the exam, and some exam preparation documents that you're going to need. Okay, the certification. What's on the exam? Well, I'm not going to tell you the exact questions, but here's my score report that I had. So I've got 15 different sections of the CCSK, and they ask you a variety of questions. This, sometimes this goes up and down, but it starts with basic cloud computing architecture, and you have to have that fundamental knowledge of cloud computing, and they point to good resources if you don't. And then it goes all the way down through all the different security domains, all the way over to the Inesia uh, certification, the Inesia uh, information on security and risk management. Let's look at each one of the domains here, just a quick high-level overview. First, architecture. They point to the NIST characteristics of the central characteristics, cloud service models, deployment models. They explain what multi-tenancy is and why that's so important to you. The Cloud Security Alliance reference model along with the Jericho and the Cloud Security reference model. They give you those models as a basis. They explain what cloud service brokers are and how impactful service level agreements are. And that's all in domain one for the architecture. In domain two, they talk about governance and enterprise risk management, talking about your contractual obligations. Again, that reaches back into the, uh, the service level agreements. Enterprise and information risk management and how that impacts the cloud. Third party management recommendations, how you deal with those externalities. An examination of supply chain for cloud and the cost savings that you can achieve within the cloud. That's domain two. In domain three, we talk about the legal issues, contracts and electronic discovery. They're big on electronic discovery, and there's a, lot of re there's a really good reason for that, primarily because when you go into the cloud and you need to offer up proof, you need to know how to freeze those images and how to communicate with your cloud security organization, the people or the cloud security, the cloud organization to pull that security elements down. So they'll talk about that jurisdictions, the liability of activities for subcontractors. That's when you hire the cloud organization. Due diligence and how you're going to respond to that. Any kind of federal rules that you have to deal with, usually this is for the US-based companies, the metadata, metadata, and finally, litigation holds and how you achieve them. In domain four, we talk about compliance and audit management, really defining compliance because a lot of us on the technology side don't have a good handle on that unless, of course, you've got the uh, CISA from ISACA, uh, then you probably have that, or maybe uh, COVID. Um, the right to audit, what you're allowed to do, what you're not, how compliance impacts our cloud contracts and how it should impact them. The audit scope and the compliance scope and how they're just a little bit different from each other. How to do analysis requirements on compliance and then 
what you should look for in an auditor that you're willing to hire for yourself to examine your cloud provider. In domain five, we talk about information management and data security. We talk about the life cycle of the data security life cycle and how that applies to your organization, the different types of storage and the controls that are placed on those storage, how you protect that. In domain five, we also talk about information management data security for data loss prevention. A lot of you may know it as D, uh, DLP. And also, we have database activity monitor and file activity monitor. Those are known as DAM and FAM. How we do backup, how we do dispersion and fragmenta fragmentation for data. It's a really elegant thing to realize that you don't have to do encryption on the data. You can do a correct, you can do a correct implementation of fragmentation and still get the same uh, level of security as you can with encryption when dealing with the cloud in large, like Google file systems. In domain six, we talk about interoperability and portability, the definitions of what those are. And then we start talking about security assertion, markup language, and WS security. How do we authenticate on the web, and how is that portable from one cloud provider to another? What happens when you deal with size of data sets? And a big consideration from a business standpoint is the lock-in considerations and how you prevent lock-in by the vendor. You want to, in interoperability and portability, be able to move from one cloud vendor to another to take advantage of uh, either new features or better cost savings. And finally, mitigating hardware compatibility issues. You go, but wait a minute, it's in the cloud. We don't have those problems. You still have virtual hardware out there. In domain seven, we talk about traditional security business continuity, and disaster recovery as it applies to the cloud. We look at the four Ds. We talk about cloud backup and how that actually works. Customer due diligence as it relates to business continuity management and disaster recovery. Restoration plans and the physical location of the cloud provider and how important that is, especially when we're dealing with regional disasters. In domain eight, we talk about data center operations and we start talking about something called the cloud control matrix. The queries that you run against the data center operators and knowing how appropriate that is or inappropriate. We start digging into the technical aspects of providers data center operations and how much of what they do you should understand and be capable of communicating to your staff. And finally, logging and reporting generation for multi-site clouds uh, becomes a consideration for you. Domain nine is incident response. How does your provider communicate to you when there is a problem? When do they communicate? What are the rules? What are the security, uh, the service level agreements on this? How to reduce the occurrence of application level incidents, in other words, putting in security controls for incident response, and offline analysis of potential incidents. In domain tel uh, 10, we talk about application security. To me, this is amazing that people don't pay attention to this for cloud security. And in here we start off with identity entitlement and access management. We talk about the SDLC and its impact and implications on our cloud environments and the different SPI models. By the way, that is software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, all shrunk down to one little set of initials. Then we talk about the considerations when performing remote vulnerability testing and if we're even allowed to, and the categories of security monitor for applications and the entitlement matrix.